Hey there, welcome to my YouTube channel. It's been a little while, but I'm really excited to hop on and to talk to you a little bit more about Gather Around Homeschool and specifically show you our newest unit release, which is a novel study underground to Canada. So if you're curious what a novel study is, how it works, what Gather Around Homeschool is, or just want to hear more about homeschooling in general, then this video is for you. So first of all, let's start with why. Why Underground to Canada? What is it? Underground to Canada is, of course, a novel. It is written by Barbara Smucker. It is available online. You'll be able to go and buy it or find it or view it. For those of you in the United States, it is much more difficult to find as it's published in Canada where it's prevalent and readily available. However, there's been a lot of people that have found the PDF online. There's been a lot of people who found it read on YouTube um, or just available in different places. Thrift books uh, I've heard has had it. Um, I've heard there's some online versions available, Kindle type ones. It's not readily available on Amazon. There is also another publication name. You might want to look into what it was published in the United States because some people have found success finding it under its other titles. So um, it can be a little bit more challenging to get a hold of, but I'm telling you that it is a nugget. It is a treasure and it is worth taking the time to dig around and find it. You will find it. I have done the search myself. I have found many different available forms of it online. So you're gonna be able to find it if you do a little bit of digging yourself. But basically it is a novel that is written about slavery and about racism. Those are the, the big core um, principles of the book in general. Um, it is written about the time period before the American Civil War when there was, of course, the Underground Railroad and people who were seeking freedom. And so you're going to learn about the Underground Railroad and you're going to learn about why they were traveling to Canada. So it's a big overall theme. It pairs very nicely with Black History Month or for anyone who's learning about the American Civil War or just wants to do a novel study. It is a fantastic novel study and it is rich, rich, rich. So the reason that I chose this book in particular, especially for our first one, was partly the time of year. Also, it is a, it's a unique novel in that the chapters are short and readable and attainable and digestible. So all of those words meaning it's going to appeal to an adult. I sat down and read it in one sitting and I've heard that from many, many people that it's, it's so interesting from the second you start it. There's not a lot of exposition. There's not a lot of like boring, dry details. Like it starts with action and it ends with action. There is action every single step of the way. So it really pulls your kids in. And even as an adult, I didn't find it too little kid or youth or it, it uses great vocabulary. It's rich, it's engaging, but it's a relatively simple, easy read. So I was able to sit and read it in a matter of an, a few hours in an afternoon. Um, that being said, there are 19 chapters in this book. And so when we divide them up, we're able to take our time to really dig through the context, dig through the history, dig through what these things are based on and ask those kind of questions to our kids. So I think that it's a great novel study in that it's going to appeal to your five-year-olds will capture them. They're going to get something out of this. They're going to be learning at their level in their student books and they are going to be engaged in the story. But it's also not too little kid and the content and discussion from it is so rich that your high schoolers are going to be enraptured by it as well. So I think it's a fantastic novel to start with, specifically with the gather round model of everyone involved in the entire family. That is why I chose this book. What is Gather Round in general? If you're brand new to it, and if you're not, I'm sorry, I'll make this very short. Gather Round is a homeschool curriculum company, and it is designed with the model of together. It's designed with the model of your family connected, learning together, um, no longer you dividing up and trying to teach five to seven different subjects with all your different kids at all their different levels. So it incorporates generally all of your subjects for all of your grades. Unlike a lot of other unit studies, it's, it's definitely a unit study approach. There is actually one book for every single child in your family at different levels. So while you're all learning similar content, instead of a teacher's guide telling you, okay, you can adapt this and here's some activities for younger or middle-aged or older students, you actually have a targeted student book for 
for their levels. So we have a pre-reader book, and that's for any child or student that is not reading yet. So specifically in Underground to Canada, this one has copying, it's got um, cutting and pasting and gluing and different activities, sequencing activities, um, coloring, they're narrating, there's all sorts of things like that, as well as the vocabulary. They're still doing everything content-wise, similarly to their siblings, but it is at their level. We have an early reader. This is for your kids that are just starting out reading. They still need assistance. They're not able to do stuff on their own and they need a lot of hand-holding. So our early reader program is designed for those six to eight year old age range and this is gonna have things like circle the answer or color a picture or draw a picture or narrate, write, dictate, draw to give lots of options and adaptations for those students where writing is very challenging for them. Throughout the unit, we do have a writing project that we work on though I like to make it um, adaptable. So your students can choose to write an essay or a book report, or they can choose to make a diorama showing the journey of Julie and Liza and where they went and what different things happened along the way. Or they could make a huge poster character profile where they're studying one of the characters. So all those recommendations are built right into this program and it gives you every week a kind of step you're gonna do. Okay, if you chose the character profile, do your planning. And then the next week it's gonna prompt them Again, and it's going to say let's start to put some things together on our poster board and begin working on it up into the presentation at the end. So it's all worked into here. Um, early elementary has a little bit more writing so they're now going to have word boxes and be filling in the blank and begin to be expected to do a little bit more. That's generally your 8 to 10 year olds. Upper elementary is your 10 to 12 year olds and now we're expecting them to you know write a couple sentences. There's a chapter summary every single day that your kids are going to work on while or primarily after they listen to the reading where they can go in depth into the plot and the settings and the characters and all of those parts of a story. Well, your upper, upper, um, upper elementary in the back of their books has a plot organizer chart as well as character profiles for the main characters in the story that they're going to add to throughout so they can see how these characters are developing and growing and changing and being developed by the author throughout the book. So it really helps them to master the concept of the elements of a story and that's all woven in on top of everything else they're going to be doing in this program. Next you have your middle schoolers. Middle and high is a little bit thicker. These go from about 50 pages. There's two pages a day. It's a mini unit, um, which I will talk about next. But our middle and high school are more like 85, 88 pages long. Now the reason is because middle and high, I decided to include a third page every day, which we have not done before. But because the topic was so rich and there was so many different directions we could go with it. I included a journaling page each day and for that I gave specific journaling prompts. So there's just deeper, richer discussion that we're going to prompt your middle and high schoolers to begin to take that information they learned and that discussion they had and think about how it relates to them or the world around them and or their opinion of things to really take it to the next level. So that is included in all of the middle and high school. Middle is generally around a 12 to 14 year old age or 12 to 15, whereas your high school is going to be that 17, um, 18, even a 16 year old who is you know, fairly mature. Um, so that's the different levels and that's what makes this different is that you're gonna come together and read from the teacher's guide and then your students are going to work in their own notebooks. Now a mini unit versus a full unit. If you go to our site, gatheroundhomeschool.com, you'll notice that we have mini units, we have full units and you might be wondering what the difference is. A full unit is something that there's 20 lessons but we have five pages a day in the student notebooks. And we do that so that we can really cover multiple different subjects. Our full units are designed to cover every subject from your spelling and your grammar and your writing and your, um, your, your social studies and your history and your geography and your art and your Bible. I mean, it's, it's all there. The only subject it does not cover is math. You will need to add math. But that is the vision behind every month we release a full unit like that that is a topic that's designed to teach all your different levels and it is designed to teach all their different subjects. So no more bouncing around for you, but also more targeted learning that your kids are actually going to remember. 
Um, the difference between a mini unit, it is still generally 20 lessons, although our holiday ones are a little bit shorter, but they're generally only about two pages a day. So those are a little bit different because they're much smaller and they're usually more targeted focus. So this one, for example, there is there is one science connection I could say you'd be able to go into and there's a prompt for it in there. But generally speaking, this is not a science unit. This is a social studies unit. They're, we're going to cover it complex, in-depth social studies topics um, just through discussion and conversation. It is an art unit. There's multiple different arts um, uh, prompts and things like that in there. It is, um, it's obviously history. They're going to be learning about black history. They're going to be learning about um, the history of slavery. They're going to be learning about, because many of the characters in the book, though they, it is fictional, there are some that are based on real life people, even including those names. So some of the stuff in there is true and it is, your kids are really going to get a rich overview of history. So um, so it's obviously a history unit. There's Bible infused in everything that we do. So every day starts off with prayer and goes from there. And so there's there's just a lot of those different subjects and then language arts. They're doing vocabulary every week. Um, they're in every lesson learning about the parts of a story. That's a main overarching focus of this unit. Every day doing those chapter summaries, they're learning that in this chapter, what is the plot? What happened? What can we add to our plot chart? Who are our characters? How have they grown and developed? What new characters were introduced? How did those characters impact our main character or change them or impact them? So seeing the, the big picture, what's our setting? Every day they will focus on setting. Your kids at the end of this unit are going to have mastered and grasped what the parts of a story are because we're not just introducing it in a worksheet in an assignment that we're giving to them. We're introducing it through an everyday relational experience that they're doing alongside you. We're introducing it through a story and through a narrative and not through their own work. They don't even have to do any work for that. They're analyzing somebody else's work. So it's gonna take that pressure off and it's gonna make it a really fun, regular exercise to master that concept. Not only that, but of course, we have a writing project that they're gonna work on throughout, whether it's a diorama or a poster or a book report or an essay to really take that to the next level and present at the end something that they feel like they've learned throughout the unit. Lastly, I'll mention um, this is something totally new that we did for this unit that has never been done before called a writing track. And I have always um, wanted to do more. Now we, we always do writing in our units and we usually do some sort of project or, or theme or we're going to write a story or we're going to write an essay. And there's weekly teaching about that in our books, sometimes daily teaching about that in our books, especially in year two, we bring in a lot more language arts. This is different. This I was able to take 20 full pages of teaching. I was able to go into one topic and I, I basically divided it up into three different levels. So you don't need this. Inside the books, there is writing projects, but if you're wanting to have more step-by-step, -step, what is a book report? What type of writing is a book report? Identifying what your writer's voice is. What's the writer's voice in here? What's your writer's voice? What is your point of view in your book report? Um, how to write good paragraphs. What what is an introduction paragraph? How is it formulated? What is a body paragraph and how is that formulated? Because it's different than an introduction paragraph. How is everything supposed to point back to our theme? Why do we want to have structured writing where everything is organized and flowing and where sometimes we don't write like that? And what is the difference? How do we quote and cite different quotes that we're using inside the book? Why should we have quotes in the book? So it goes through step by step. What is an outline? Why do we make our outline? And it has three different levels of writing projects. So for your early reader, early elementary, there's a level one in here where they will be writing a paragraph. For your kind of middle um, students, they're going to be writing a page, about two paragraphs. Whereas for your high school or middle school students, they're going to be expected to write a five paragraph essay format book report. And so in that, they're going to be really choosing um, a, a main point or idea that they're getting across and going through it. I, I'm very curious to see how this goes. I tried to price it very affordably. I did make it available in digital as well as in print because I'm, I'm hopeful that if this is a good fit and if this is something that you guys love and want to see more of, then this is something that I'm willing to in invest in and maybe consider adding for our units for that, okay, you can do the writing project that's in there for people that don't need a lot of direction, but if you want to have more direction or just want to give something to your kids and say, okay, go do your writing 
reading lesson that's going to coincide with this, then you can do that. The other thing I included in here is even examples. I wrote paragraphs and an outline that they can use an example specifically with the theme underground to Canada. So here's my main point and they can see how it's broken down and then they can see what a paragraph is like written from my main point and my supporting points and my quotes that I included and begin to analyze and have examples rather than us just teaching this open-ended thing that again doesn't connect to what they're actually doing. So I'm really curious to see what you guys think of this uh, writing track. I'm excited about it but you are the ultimate one who's going to say yay or nay to this because trust me I will not waste my time if we don't have time for that. So hopefully this helped give you a little overview of our novel study. It is really exciting. It is rich. And I really recommend that you go onto the site. Of course, in a flip through video, you're going to see a, a glimpse and it's probably not clear enough for you to be able to read um, or it's moving too quickly. So if you go to gatheroundhomeschool.com, you're going to be able to see on the site uh, all, of the, all of the different pages. Um, we take pictures of them, high quality. So you can zoom in, you can see the scope and sequence, the big ideas of the unit, um, what is covered, as well as a full lesson example. Basically in this unit, um, I'll just say a little bit, the teacher's guide, I, I feel like I just have to just, just dive in a little more. For the teacher's guide, basically what you're going to be doing is very different from our other units where you're going to sit and read and send them off on their own to do their student notebook pages. For the first time, again, I, I wanted to test out something new. So I decided to include scripted teaching. So we're going to read from the teacher's guide. But again, because we're reading in the book, there's not really a need for me to do a whole lot of, of reading from this as well. It just gets heavy. So instead, there is sometimes a contextual what you should know. And we do a little bit of context reading, but it's short. Um, they're doing a chapter summary each day. So your kids are going to choose a presenter to present what happened the day before, which of course they can use. They're chapter summary pages to review and go over and present what happens. It's a great way to reflect, to remember, to recall, and to present and practice that before they go into the next chapter. They are going to be making predictions about what they think is going to happen in the next chapter. Moving on from there, you're going to read the chapter together or the you should know, and then there's rich discussion questions. I did not include reading comprehension questions of do you remember what this is? No. I did that a little bit in the units themselves. There's review built in. But in the discussion questions, they are made to prompt discussion. They are deep questions about what would it be like or how would you feel or 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 what does this like look like as a big picture and really prompting them to be able to discuss. Pour yourself some tea, sit down, have some hot chocolate, discuss. You guys are going to have the most amazing discussions from this book. They are well thought out questions that took me a lot of time. So trust me, they are they are gold. They are worth it. So after you do discussion, it's going to now prompt you and say, okay, now go work in your student notebooks. Now, of course, if you want, you could just assign that to your kids, but I did it differently without the data glance and the teacher's companion where I actually did scripted teaching right inside the teacher's guide. So in the, your teacher's guide on the next page, it's going to say page one, chapter summary, and then it's going to walk them through. Okay, everyone turn to your first box. That What would you name this chapter if you could name it? What would you rate this chapter? Who do you think the main characters are? And then there's answers right there. So you are going to be reading. You don't have to plan it. You don't have to think about what they're doing and they're doing and they're doing. It's all listed there. All you're going to do is stay in the same spot you were and keep reading from the teacher's guide. So it's very unique compared to our other mini units. It's very unique to anything we've ever done before. And again, I'm just super curious to th see what you guys think of it and have to say if you like this style um, and if you're wanting to see more novel studies in the future. So there you go. You had a little bit of an unveiling of a novel study. Like I said, go and check out gatheroundhomeschool.com if you're interested to hear more about Gather Round. There's some other videos here that explain the philosophy and the start. They are older. They are still true, but I will be working on creating some more videos in the months to come to show you flip throughs and explain more of the philosophy here. So, so excited you guys. If you like this video, hit the subscribe button and stay tuned for more. See you later.